Now let's talk about the few different selection modes you actually have available to you. I told you I like to use the default mode, but there's also the auto switch mode and tweak mode. In auto switch mode, you'll notice that if we hover over a polygon, we can select a polygon. If we hover over an edge, an edge, and a point, a point. We can select certain points, just wherever we want them. And then we can decide, oh, I want to select polygons. Then we can start selecting polygons. Notice if we hold down on the shift button and select a point, then it will select the previous points we had selected. So it's actually changing modes automatically, depending on what you hover your cursor over and select. So if you want to select edges, you just hover over an edge and you select it. Hmm. Or a point, and you can select a point. point it, points, edges, or polygons. Hmm. And you can continue to select whatever you might want to select. You can always go back to the tools you like to use. Whether that be the oops, the move tool. Whoa. A little strange. It's like it eh, well like it generally uh, I generally don't uh, don't use that. But uh huh, wants to select the edges. Well if you go to tweak mode a little bit different. It allows you to simply move things around so you can instantly grab them, move them around if you're in if you're in the rotate tool or, or scale tool. You can just select something and then immediately start dragging on it. Of course, won't work if you're using points. But you can just select whatever it might be, rotate it around. Which is basically the whole point of tweak mode. You take you take individual elements, whether it be edges, polygons, points, move them or scale them around. Just whatever you click on is whatever it's gonna be active. Whatever is gonna be active and whatever is gonna move around. Points, edges or polygons. So that's the um, the whole basis of basis for tweak mode. I usually stay in the default mode. Of course there's object mode, which is your whole object. Your whole object is selected. And then this is the axis tool. This will actually allow you to move your axis. So if you want to move your axis out of the object for whatever reason, you can change the pivot point. So if you go to rotate and go back to object mode, it will rotate along its axis <coughs> where you moved it to. Let's say you do that, you save, you come back to it, and maybe you want to undo that. You can simply go to no, structure, you got axis center, and center to axis. And what that will do is that will center the axis to the object. Or, if you're wanting to center your cube, you can center your object to the axis. So, there's different methods of doing that. Of course, this is if you have objects in a parent or a child, you can change that also. Of course, it won't put the axis in the exact location it was before, but in the center of the object. And it come and it, all these points we changed with up here are taken into account. So if you select those, it'll put the axis right in the middle, which is probably where it is located. On its own axis. We try to. Uh, I guess I didn't get the highest point there. There we go. Notice the position of all those, all those together, is zero. So they're it's they're all in the center, all selected. They're in the center of their own axis. Now you notice that I use the uh, this other tool up here. Got a few different tools to choose from. This is what we've been using most of the time. Select individual points or polygons. There's also the rectangular selection, which I use quite a bit. If you middle click and change modes, you can uh, select points just across a plane. So you can select all the bottom points. Oh, notice, notice that I only selected these front points. Remember again that that's because we have only select visible elements checked. That changes though. That doesn't. That doesn't carry on to this. And this we still have 
only selected elements, only visible elements to select. So we change the back to rectangular section. We don't have only visible elements to select. So now we, we should be able to select everything. And this is usually what I prefer is the rectangular selection selects anything and everything and the uh, the round the round selection tool doesn't. Uh, usually don't use these but you can use these if you'd like to. Just circle around where whatever you would like to select and it'll select it. Or the polygon selection. Select Select whatever you like and notice only visible elements isn't selected. That's on all the selection, those large selection tools, but this tool is independent. Live selection is independent. So that, uh, that generally covers the um, selection modes there. One more thing about hiding and unhiding selections. So if you um, do decide to hide a selection, just uh, hide selected. If you go into a different mode, like edges mode, and if you say you want to, you want to see those polygons again, you're gonna unhide all them. They don't show up. That's because it actually is dependent on the selection mode you're in. So you have to go back into polygons to unhide those. You can also invert visibility, so it'll just show those that you hid, which is uh, mm -hmm. can be very useful. You can also hide unselected, so everything is hidden now. Just go to unhide all to see everything again once more. And notice, of course, when you hide the edges and the points, everything is more or less still there. You can still see the geometry, but you just can't select it. So, kind of a safety feature, if you will. But it's very helpful in polygons, particularly if you'd like to see through the object, so you can actually get behind something. And notice, you can still select the polygons that are there move them around however you'd like or even the points they just look fairly strange